All right, everybody, welcome to the Jelly Silly. That's not what it's called. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Silly Jelly Belly. Yeah, Silly Jelly Belly Helly. Look at the, the, the beans, the little jelly, the candy beans, the ones made of sugar that'll destroy your fucking teeth. Bean boozled. Oh, dude, bean it's boozled. Simple. Bean boozled would be terrible. Let's not do that on the podcast. Let's do an actual video. <laughs> all right uh I'm doing something yeah you die you eat a bean yeah you eat vomit bean or grass bean Oof. vomit is the fucking i hate that bean so much no canned dog food is the worst one it is by far oh my fuck because it lingers in your mouth for so long and the aroma is just oh jesus um, how do they encapsulate such a horrible flavor so well i have no idea dude imagine how many times people must have tasted that terrible canned dog food until they were like yeah this is awful enough <laughs> they're like on the edge of tears every time like their eyes are welling up they're like mm -hmm. what do you want babies it tastes like shit grumpo grumpo business with the feet ew all right bye oh <laughs> uh so rusty thought it would be a good idea which i think it is to um, bring up, like, I suppose chunks of stories that are, like, really good or really interesting. Kind of explain why they're so good and interesting. So since it's Rusty's idea, we're going to let him go first. Uh, well, the smartass. Uh, <laughs> well, I, I figured I would you know, just give a little bit of the backstory on my thought process for, sure. for this bit. So I was thinking, you know, maybe this is just something we could do every once in a while. Whenever we're feeling it. But the idea behind it is I didn't want, obviously it would take too much time to explain like the entire story of something. So I was thinking we would just tell little snippets. In my case, it's two issues of a comic book uh, this time. Uh, I'm going to be talking about, surprise, surprise, a JRPG. Um, so yeah, uh, I'll, I have the issues on my phone. Um, so... Um, well before the Moon Knight show came out, uh, I think a few years ago, I read a really good run on Moon Knight that came out as part of the Marvel Now imprint. So probably around 2015, 2016. Okay. So whenever this issue came out. And uh, this is from volume one of the Marvel Now run on Moon Knight. This is issues four and five. And so for the first two volume, well, the, the first volume of this run, it's really, everything is self-contained. Like every issue is its own little story. Okay. So it's, it's a really good means, I guess, of introducing yourself to Moon Knight and what he does. So this first one, it starts out with, um, this dude who's leaving a fast food joint and... He gets picked up by Moon Knight um, and his Mr. Knight persona, um, the all white suited fellow yeah, right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, really groovy look. So this guy introduces himself. He's like, I'm a doctor. You know, uh, I work with, I've been working on this sleep study. Um, and Moon Knight's like, yeah, 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 cool. I work for a dude who... Moon Knight is talking about so he has connections to this god named Khonshu who is this Egyptian god of the moon but uh, as such he's also like the god of dreams to extent and That's like cool. night travelers um, so Moon Knight really concerns himself with these sort of groups of people and so because this guy's a doctor of sleep and a lot of, a lot of his patients are sort of a lot of his patients are like experiencing issues in his lab. Let's see what it, does he say specifically what it is. Um, let's see, yeah. So, like they were essentially like their sleep was getting all fucked up, and they were doing things in their sleep that they shouldn't have been able to do. Let me see if he says, like, specifically. What are you doing, Spicy? <laughs> Spicy's just being dumb. She's kicking my little feet. Um. <laughs> what are you talking about? Spicy, you're crazy. 
Um, all the patients are having the same dream. Um, and it's driving them insane. And, like, one of the, I think he, he specifically says, like, one of his patients was injuring themselves in a way that they definitely should have woken up from. Oh my god. But they didn't. Uh, in their sleep. So, he's just like, alright. Let me see your setup you got here. You set me up in a, a place where I can sleep. And the guy's like, um, alright. Whatever. Uh, so, Moon Knight. Moon Knight gets to sleep. Oh, here it is. One of them bit through her own fingers while asleep and didn't awake from it. What? Once, once we got her to wake, she started screaming about needing to escape her own body. That's crazy, dude. She knocked over the bag and flipped her fucking lid. <laughs> yeah, spicy crack. My god. You flicker. Stop. Go away. Go on. <laughs> the dumb baby. Oh, she's playing with a hair tie. Yeah. And she knocked over the bag and scared herself. So, Moon Knight gets set up in this room, which I should also talk about. The art is simple, but I think it's really impactful. Yeah, the art's very, very simple. A lot of thick shadows. Um, so, Mr. Knight gets set up in this room, and he goes to sleep. And he, but first, he prays to Conchu. He says, I know, I know you can hear me. Put me to sleep. Doing. Where's that hair tie? I hope it fucking falls into the shadow realm. <laughs> so he goes. He starts to dream, and this is the sequence that we go through. He's sl he's sleeping on the floor, and there's a bunch of mushrooms that start to grow up from it. They look crazy. And then he falls through the floor into like this mushroom void hell. I love the colors. Like the background is just like outer space. Yeah. And, like from the top of the page to the bottom, the mushrooms transition from like green to blue, and it's super super cool. And he falls through the dream dimension, and his clothes start to shatter and fall apart until he's uh, in the more traditional Moon Knight suit. And he glides down onto the surface of this, like, mushroom realm. The mushroom. And it's this, like, full page, uh, four very wide panels spread of a skull with mushrooms growing out of it. That's awesome. But, like, the skull is upside down, so you see his chin at the top of the page. And he finally lands on the surface, and he lands on what seems to be a brain. And there's, like, a fungal hand that reaches out from the walls to grab him. And he, he starts cutting through them all, and he sees, like, a specter-esque figure. And he says, I can't sleep. I can't wake up. And the spectral figure turns, and he has mushrooms growing out of his eyes. And uh, Moon Knight gets sucked into the fungus. And the specter says, I'm trapped in here. I don't know where I am. Cryptococcus and dimethyltryptamine. I don't know if I'm dreaming that I'm dead or dead from dreaming. And his face appears on the floor that Moon Knight is standing on. Oh, God. Yeah, look at that. It's like a bunch of faces. Yeah, I hate it. And he appears in a house of fungus. Am I dead? Are you trapped inside my corpse with me? Help me. I think I'm dead, but I can't stop dreaming. What? I really like that, that line a lot. I think I'm dead, but I can't stop dreaming. That and is then, a... And then it's like this... Um, like Ween album cover esque art. That is a killer line of though. like a a mushroom nervous system creature with arthropod legs. Yeah, that's. And the super... Moon Knight wakes up with a start. <laughs> he kicks through the fucking door <laughs> and goes to this guy who, this doctor who called him in. And he grabs him by the face and he slams it into his desk, drags him to the room, and he says. Let's go, damn it. Your your brain is under a uh, Oh, no, 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 no. The, the doctor says, let go. Your brain is under attack, just like the others. And Moon Knight says, shut up, and punches him into the floor. And he throws him into the room, and he says... Um, and he rips up the floorboards to the doctor's protest and reveals a corpse. 
oh. that has been rudimentary, like, wrapped. And it's got fungus growing out of his head. And, uh, and the doctor explains, one of the first test subjects he found on Craigslist, um, <laughs> he was, he was, he had some s sort of fungal infection that was killing him. And he died while he was asleep. Oh. So he couldn't have anyone find out because it would, like, ruin his research or whatever. So he just dumped the body under the floorboards. He didn't dump it in, like, I don't know, a lake? This is New York City. There's plenty of places to die. Just get a boat. <laughs> dump him in <laughs> the fucking ocean. Well, he was in a... If, if you someone dies and you're in your office and you're doing your sleep study, you know, you're not gonna think... Whatever. I guess so. I, um, I guess so. So, Mr. Knight says, look at him, down there in the damp, rank with whatever crap you were putting into him. His brain sporulated. We've been breathing his dreams. What? We've and been then, breathing his dreams. And then he dips. And then issue five of Moon Knight is a lot more clear-cut and simple. If I can... If the page will fucking load, Jesus. So, he pulls up on this thug. And he greets him. The guy says, get lost. So he pulls out a fucking kopash and points it at his neck. <laughs> and he's basically like, well, you're going to tell me what you want to know. Oh, well, this is great. I confiscated this from a man in Egypt who tried to take someone away from me. I was quite upset with him. I'm told he still passes shards of his own rib cage, of his own rib cage when he goes to the bathroom. Well, oh my god! So the guy tells him what he wants to know. Um, so Moon Knight is looking for a little girl who was kidnapped. Okay. And currently is being held for ransom. Oh. So the guy says, "There's a dozen people in there, maybe more," and the. Uh, person he's looking for, Mr. Knight is looking for, is at the top floor of this building. Um, so, Mr. Knight gets a good idea of what's going on. He's like, well, she's on the top floor, and there's four floors between us. Might as well just go through the front door. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, he grabs his his old uh, beaten batons, like the, like what like Daredevil has. Yeah. This is Jesus Christ. I I have this downloaded. I don't know why it's taking so so much time to load. So much time to load. Shut up. I'll kiss you. No, you won't. Ew. I haven't washed that in weeks. Really? No, I showered this morning. Um. So Moon Knight breaks through into this the first floor. And he says, hey, were the boards, the, the thug says, hey, were the boards over the door not a clue that we're closed? So he fucking kicks the shit out of this guy. And the next guy shows up. He says, what are you supposed to be? And he throws a, one of his moonerangs into the guy's fucking hand. So he drops his gun. And he says, the one you see coming. <laughs> what the hell are you? Uh, so he, there's just a bunch of really great the 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 art in this issue is on fucking point. Yeah, I love it. There's a really dynamic sense of motion to everything. So he takes out this dude's ankle, lifts him up over his shoulder, and throws him down <laughs> onto the guardrail, where he fucking cracks in half, basically. So another dude starts shooting at him, and he throws his beaten stick and <laughs> hits the guy right into the face, and he says, Damn it, those things cost real money, and it's not like I have a job. So he goes onto the second floor. He throws a moonerang up through someone's fucking jaw. Oh god. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> and he says, whoa, whoa. And then he kicks him through the guardrail. <laughs> it's a plummet through the building. Third floor. And uh, this big guy comes out. He says, oh, it's trying to take a nap. And Moon Knight goes to punch him. And he says, that's not helping. He grabs and Moon so Knight he, by the face. Yeah. And Moon Knight stabs some moonerangs into his chest, and he wraps his coat around his face, and throws the guy also through the guardrail. <laughs> he says, fourth floor. And he rolls up his sleeves, 
Oh, uh, this is the fucking best part. Is three dudes running up on him. He kicks the first guy in the stomach, and the guy up chucks. The second guy goes for a punch. He deflects it, kicks the third guy in the ribs, and throws the fourth guy, or throws the second guy down. And then there's another dude who comes down the stairs. He throws a moonerang into his foot, and he trips, and he eats shit. <laughs> so he's finally on the fifth floor. And this dude with golden knives comes out. Um, he throws a moonerang, the guy deflects it, and so uh, Mr. Knight says nice. And then they engage in a knife fight. Well, I guess a one-sided knife fight. He breaks one of his wrists, stabs the other dude, he <laughs> uses the uh, dude's own knife to stab him in the thigh, and th he throws him through a door. Um, and then a dude who's sitting there drinking a beer gets up. Moon Knight breaks in his kneecap. Uh, and then there's a dude running at him with a baseball bat. And Mr. Knight says, good, I needed one of those. <laughs> so he takes the guy out and disarms him, takes the bat. He was that fucking bat. He says, come out, come out, wherever you are. And don't go downstairs. It's not safe. <laughs> a guy, guy comes out with a gun, he says, not safe. And Moon Knight cracks him upside the fucking head. Oh my god. And then another dude catches sight of him, and he starts running. And he points a gun at the hostage's head. He says, pretty sure my gun has a better reach than your bat. And Moon Knight says, but I love this bat. And you owe me a truncheon. And you can't kill me. You could kill her, it's true. But what saves your life after she's dead? Everyone already thinks the kid's dead. That loss is accepted. Have you accepted yours? Oh my god. Are you ready to die today? You could use that gun on her now, but she's the only thing keeping you alive. Make your call. So Moon Knight grabs the gun and blocks the guy with the bat. Uh, he greets the he greets the child. He says, I guess I must look pretty weird. The girl says, yeah. He says, my name is Mr. Knight. The police will be here to pick you up in a little bit. You can tell them that you met me. Um, the girl says, your face. Uh... The man says, it's a mask. Did they hurt you at all? Uh, he says, no, they just carried me places. And she says, it's not a mask. It's your face. And he says, good. Or he's a smart kid. And then he leaves a message for a detective. <laughs> There's one dude who runs out to the roof and his moon glider fucking squishes him. <laughs> and he just takes off. Oh yeah, right as the guy's dying, he says, listen. Uh, where you're going, tell your friends. Tell everyone you meet there. Tell them all. When you see me coming, run. Oh my god. And that's the end of the issue. But I think that those two issues really encapsulate the two main sides of Moon Knight. The, the, the kick-ass part, and the sort of, like, mysticism part. And uh, they're both really, really neat. That, that six issue volume is actually what got me into Moon Knight in the first place. Before that I had heard of the character, I knew that people liked him. Excuse me, but I didn't know exactly what about him people liked. Having read that, I was like, yo, <laughs> Moon Knight's pretty sick. Baller. Yeah, I think I I would have been I would have been pretty young. So like eighth ninth grade whenever i picked it up and i read it and it was it was so good and uh so yeah from i've been a fan of moon knight ever since i i read it going forward and um actually they use a lot of the themes and what that six issue arc did with the character in the show like mr knight didn't exist before that arc really yeah his, he had other personalities. And now Mr. Knight is an integral part of the show, as I've yeah. seen the first couple episodes. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, so... I, I just figured... That was actually the, the main factor. I wanted to tell Gavin and you guys at home about these Moon Knight stories that I've, I've, I thoroughly enjoyed. And so I figured it would be, you know, a good backbone to start uh, a possibly recurring bit anytime we want to talk about something neat story related um so yeah well i wanted to uh i wanted to talk about the cyberpunk anime but 
Rusty hasn't finished it yet. He's still got a few episodes to go, so I'm going to hold off on that. We can talk about the the first bit, though. The first first few episodes of... I, I think episode one, I was definitely skeptical. Episode one, I wasn't too into it, but by the end of episode two, I was fully invested. Yeah, exactly. They do really good things. Um, so obviously, full spoilers ahead. Yes, for spoilers. Episodes, episodes one through six. Yeah, one through six is what you watched. Yeah. And then I finished watching it this uh, afternoon once I got home. So, um, episode one opens with like this poor, this poor kid David, who is basically like he has he's he doesn't have very many upgrades. Oh, um, I should also clarify that this episode probably won't be coming out for a few weeks, but still, it's good to have spoilers. Yeah. Spoiler warnings. But, um, David, no, he doesn't have any chrome. He has, like, he has, like, the... He has the basic, like, USB port. Yeah, he's got, like, the ports. He can receive calls and shit, but he's got, like, just enough to be considered normal in the society. But he's not even. Not even normal, yeah. Well... High class normal. He's not even high class normal. Yeah, he's got... If he goes to a good school, and the students there make fun of him because he doesn't have all the good shit. So the entire first episode is kind of just setting David up as, like, this kid who doesn't have the... He doesn't have the same upgrades or anything as all the other kids. He's not a cool kid. He's, um... He's He's... different. He's poor, quote-unquote. He is smart, though. He's very smart. He's he's a talented... He's a talented student. It's mentioned several times that he is a straight-A student. He just doesn't want to apply himself. So instead what he does is he... I forget the exact phrasing, but he essentially uploads malware. Or like the wrong wrong update. He, yeah, he gets, he gets a bootleg update because he doesn't want to spend his mom's money for it. Because they're already tight for cash. Yeah. Um, um, the Yeah, the first episode or two kind of just set up David for his, uh, his journey throughout the series. Which is extremely depressing. He pretty much loses everything in a matter of days. Yes, his mom dies, um, and he can't even, like, afford to get a proper burial for her, so he goes to, like, a a, a public... I also really like the, the world. The world is just so cynical and terrible. Dude, I love cyberpunk so much. Uh, so he goes to, like... So, well, first off... He can't. He doesn't even have like the premium medical stuff. He has, he has like, discount medical yeah, stuff. Yeah, he's got like so it, like basic and insurance. And you get to see, yeah, you, and you get to see how terrible that basic insurance is. It's like here's what's wrong it's with a her. Dingy, dingy fucking hospital. They're like here's, terrible here's lighting. Here's what's wrong with her. Uh, we can't do anything about it though. Uh, here are your options, and they give him like a tablet, and it's like. Well, what about our budget cremation like, service? Well, we're, we're so sorry for your loss. Yeah, it leads with, I'm sorry for your loss. Yeah. It's so, so he gets... It's so fake. He gets a big, uh, big futuristic looking urn. I say that, but... It's just, it's a, just an urn. Yeah, yeah it has her name like a, a printed on it. Big metal cylinder, almost like a fat soda can. And in his mom's work jacket, he finds an augment. And so at first he, fl- he tries to flip it, but... He's not no getting. One, he's not getting any buyers. Yeah, he's not getting. Well, he's not getting any good estimates. Yes. He hears from his ripper doc that it's like, ten k. He's like, it's worth more than that, you shithead. And um, so after this, he starts to think for a minute. And he starts to get real pissed off. So he goes to have it installed into him. Uh, it's like a. The augment. It's like a military grade. Military grade spine that greatly increases like reflexes and movement speed. And we don't know. We don't know at the time, but they mention it later that it is severe. It's typically severely damaging to someone. Like so, he's like a teenage kid who is like you know he's he's relatively fit, but he's not trained by any means. Yeah. The previous user of this was like uh, an anti. Like, he would go up against people who were enhanced to the point of insanity, and this guy was fucking murking the shit out of them. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's called cyberpsycho. Cyberpsychosis. Whenever yeah. they get enhanced to the point of lunacy. But he went cyberpsycho, so they killed him, and his mom ended up with the implant. Somehow. It's never really explained. Yeah. But um, she was going to sell it to... Um, the leader of a gang, which David, by the end of episode, I think it's two, 
gets wrapped up in. Yeah. So, episode one, uh, b- back where we left off, he gets the implant, he puts it in himself, he shows up to school, and he kicks he, his bully's ass. Yeah, he absolutely wipes the floor. Well, no, it's not really that. He, like... He punches him once, he's and like, are he you, flies through he's a like, monitor. Are you afraid of getting caught? Because I sure as shit ain't. And then he fucking, oh, yeah, because exactly. He right hooks him he into He realizes a wall. he has nothing left to lose, so he that's why he gets the augment. And he goes to school, he goes to school, and he kicks the shit out of this kid, and he bails. Um, so, later on, he's on the subway, and he catches this girl stealing info from different... Yeah, stealing, like, data chips from people's ports. Yeah, business people. So, he catches her in the act, and confronts her, and she's like, well, I mean, I guess we could work together. And so, for the rest of the night... They, um, she, pl- she, she plants uses it. him, she uses him to collect the chips a yeah, lot easier. Because he can slow time to a crawl yeah, he and can, move really fast. He can essentially cross, well, in the show, it's like he's in the middle of the city and then he's in his apartment within seconds. Um, but during that spree, he like overdoes it. He uses it. What he says eight, eight times. times, eight times, and then and then he gets he, a nosebleed and passes out. Yeah, he passes the hell out. So she brings him to a ripper dock. Or oh, no, no, she brings an, him to, yeah, the, to the ambulance. The ambulance tries to realizes the tech he has tries to screw him over, and then she grabs him on his stretcher. No, dude, they weren't gonna him out. They weren't gonna screw him over. They were ready to kill him. Yeah, they were ready to kill him and steal his <laughs> his augment. So what she does is she runs the stretcher into the dock and then opens the doors and takes the stretcher out onto the highway until eventually she slows it to a stop. Uh, and, and he's then, like, all right, you got to take me to my ripper dock. Yeah. Oh. And, and the guy is like, holy shit, you said you did it like eight times? You That's should be crazy. Dead. Yeah, yeah, you, you should, should be, be dead. well dead. He's like two or three uses would kill like a grown man twice your size. So David learns this information and Lucy, the hot lady, is like, well, we go come to my apartment or what the fuck ever. Um, they have a really good night, or so David thinks, and she actually sold him out to the gang. Yeah, he, and he's he like, comes to and he gets punched in the fucking face. Yeah, he's held by his ankle by the, the leader. And he's like, that should be my implant. Yeah. Uh, and then he's like, let me prove myself. So they let him prove himself. No, what, what, he, what happens is he specifically mentions that he got the implant from his mom. And he explains who she is, and they're like, oh, that's rough. Uh, but we still can't let you off scot-free. Yeah. And so he manages to convince them, hey, you guys are cyberpunks, let me just join your crew for a bit. Prove my worth, I'll carry my weight. I'll work off the debt, or something like that. Yeah. So, um, they let him in. And um, they run a couple jobs, and eventually they're like, yeah, this guy's cool. Uh, and they, they let him in. And they all become very tight, very close friends. And very, we'll very close friends. We'll leave it at that. We don't want to spoil too much of the show. That's just about as much as we can get into without me being like, "Oh yeah, here's episode seven, eight, nine, and ten, and then ruining it for Rusty." But dude, there's so much shit coming. Yeah, there's it's... a lot of there's a lot of crazy stuff. Even where we stopped explaining. Um, it's so good. Um, it's kind of like Invincible. They're not afraid with. They don't tiptoe around gore and blood. There's a lot of gore and nudity. So just be aware if you're going to watch this. Um, My favorite thing about it is that they are not afraid to kill characters. Yes. They, they'll kill anybody they need to to advance the plot. I love it. But um, the story that I wanted to talk about besides the end of Cyberpunk was Soul Hackers 2, which if... I wouldn't be surprised if anybody knows what it is or doesn't know what it is. Um, Soul Hackers 1, I believe, was released on the DS and it was almost unavailable here in the West. Mm. So it was almost entirely like a Japan thing. It was on the DS? I think so. I'm pretty sure it was a DS release. Somebody in the comments get mad at me and call me uh, a useless virgin if I'm wrong to any degree. (laughs) But <laughs> I got it because it's by Atlas, the people who made Persona 3, 4, and 5. Um, so did you get emulated on the DS then? No, I, I didn't even touch, I didn't even consider Soul <laughs> Hackers 1. Because like, by the, time that oh, I, okay. by the time that I discovered Soul Hackers 2, I'm like, okay, well, it's like a month out. So I'm not even going to try to play the original. Because typically Atlas games are all, like there's references to other games, but they're all like their own kind of bubble. 
Um, <sighs> but Soul Hackers 2 is unique to me in the sense that in the first few hours of the story, first hour or so, I would say, um, you're introduced to your player character and the three other members of your party. Um, so, like, the, the way that they do it in Persona is they'll introduce you to your player character, a few other characters, so they'll give you, like, five or six to learn, and then they'll drip feed you a few more as the story goes. So, like, every few weeks or so in Persona, they introduce three or four more characters or whatever. But Soul Hackers, they introduce all of the main characters at once. Um... And I'm only like three or four hours into the main story, so this isn't any major spoilers, minor spoilers at best. Um, essentially, your character, her name is Ringo. She is... Yeah, I know, it's stupid. I hate it. Where does it take place? Is this also in Japan? Yes, it is in Japan. It's... Oh, I think it's vaguely like 2060 2070 oh so it is it is futuristic yes it is very futuristic there's okay. tons of holograms and shit like that um so you play as ringo and you are accompanied by fig f-i-g-u-e these fig. are these are terrible names yes they are uh, can you tell me some of the other names or are you gonna get to that um i'll get to those in a minute so ringo and fig are both, um, essentially, like, supercomputers given flesh. Um, they are affiliated with, like, it's called Ion, which is essentially, like, a third party of, like, supercomputers and, like, limitless data, and they're just observing the universe as it is. But something is something is going to happen in the story. I don't remember off the top of my head exactly. Some sort of Armageddon that a group is trying to um, bring upon the world because they hate the world. Mm. So the supercomputer is like, you got to wake up. I'm going to give you a, a corporeal form and you're going to go uh, prevent this as best you can. So Ringo and Fig are sent uh, to Japan onto the mainland. They're like, okay, start here. This is the best we lead that we have. You come across um, Arrow, who was shot in the fucking head. <laughs> <laughs> so he was shot in the head obviously dead he's lying in a pool of his own blood by the time you find him uh you soul hack him hence the name soul hackers and then he's brought back from the dead he's like oh dude that's crazy what is soul hacking it's essentially just like she'll she'll sit on the ground next to the target and she'll be like beginning navigation something she like draws like a neon shape and it like scans his body she dives into his memories and then arrows like his consciousness is like sitting on the ground he's like oh man i really i really screwed up <laughs> i could have done so, so much it's, better it's just it's just the the character entering the subject's brain and like discovering their thoughts and stuff essentially yeah okay so she'll like she'll dive through um see some snippets like how he died how it kind of came to be other bits and pieces that aren't explained but you find out later um and then she essentially is like you have unfinished business. Uh, I have some business that I need help with. I think we can make a deal here. Uh, she essentially does this with all three people, of course, kind of rephrasing it to appeal to their personality. So you revive Arrow. He is an operative for... Oh, shit. Oh, what's it called? It's some Japanese word that I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, you revive Arrow, he's an operative for an organization, he was trying to do like, he was like a mole, trying to figure out what they were doing exactly, when they were going to do it. Mm. You revive Melody, who was actually the, I think girlfriend is the right term, <laughs> the girlfriend of, like, the leader of, fuck, this one should be easy, these are English words. The terrorist group? Yeah, there's like a, like the terrorist group, their name is, oh, fuck me. Buttmasters. Yeah, the Buttmasters. <laughs> is it Buttmaster your name on iFunny? It is. So I, I really Buttmaster. like that name. That's silly. You yeah. should use it in more things. Oh, <laughs> uh, let me see. So, Soul Hackers 2, Devil Summoner. 
Ringo Fig. Oh yeah, Fig is like um she's just Ringo's counterpart. Like Ringo's very carefree, relaxed and sarcastic and Fig is very analytical. Like we got to go about it this way. I here's a recon drone that I can control. Um okay, so Arrow is part of Yadagarasu. Um they essentially use demons. They function the same as personas or stands. Um and he's just trying to figure out what um what, what is his thing oh it's the phantom society it's the phantom society or the bad people oh the phantom society yeah what, what do you what do you mean his thing like arrows power like what you said he has a demon yeah and it's like a stand does it have a name um or like what does it do his his it's pathetic like <laughs> soul hackers it's that's not why, like... that's why his ass died yeah <laughs> exactly it's not like Persona or JoJo's where they have like a main. Well, I guess JoJo's the main they only ability. have one. Um, so like Persona, Joker has Arsene. Um, Persona Three protagonist has um, Orpheus. So that's like their main Persona. You don't use it very long because it's like a tutorial. But like everybody else in the party has like a, a determined character to represent them. Um, in Soul Hackers, you just collect demons and they're interchangeable with everybody. Mm. So nobody really has like a concrete oh, okay. demon. They kind of just use demons as so like. So it, it has the same thing as Persona. Um, it has the similar mechanics, yeah. Okay. Um, I would. That's, that's, I just wanted to know how that worked. I would compare demons more so to Pokemon, but like you can only have one Pokemon to each person at a time. So depending on which demon, you have different skills. Okay. Um. So there's Arrow, part of Yadagarasu. There's Milady. She was the uh, girlfriend of the leader of the Phantom Society. His name is Iron Mask, and he looks stupid. Iron Mask? His name is Iron Mask. That sounds like a shitty Doctor Doom. Oh, dude, he's terrible. Does, is he? Does he look like a shitty Doctor Doom? No. I imagine shitty Doctor Doom would still be pretty good. No, he looks... He's is just he... a man in a suit with a stupid mask. That's dumb. Um, and then my favorite, his name is Saizo. Sizo? Yeah. Uh, he's a freelance devil summoner, so he just does odd jobs that... He's like to, a merc? To get whatever money he can, yeah. Oh, nice. Um, With Logan Merc. He's a romantic man capable of reading the air. Uh, he often butts into and settles Arrow and Milady's fights. I love Sizo a lot, because he's got like a, a big drum magazine Tommy gun as his <laughs> weapon. You show me a picture? Of Sizo? Hell yeah, yeah dude. I love Sizo. I'm gonna get a good image of what this man is. Um, that's not the one that I'm thinking of. This is what is one. what is um Soul Hackers 2 on? Um, it's on PlayStation 5, Xbox Series, and PC right now. Okay. Sizo Soul Hackers. Um, he's very sarcastic and he's always got some attitude. <laughs> I like him. He's got like a... a he's, got, he's got a cool style. He reminds white, me of Dante. White bowler hat, yeah. Um, Daiso is my favorite character so far. But everybody... For the first couple hours of the game... Like, you revive everyone in the first hour... And then you collect everyone at Arrow's hideout. And it's like, okay, well... We have this common goal, but we don't really like each other. And I'm getting to a point where everyone is kind of like... Like, they actually trust each other. They enjoy each other's company... They're bantering a little bit. Um, Milady is very uptight and strict. But there is a there is a scene where you go is to... There, is there a dumb strong guy? Not really. Not in the party. There are some dumb strong... The first... The first named enemy, besides any demons you fight, his name is R.S., can you guess? Give me one good guess. What do you think RS stands for? Right shithead. No. It stands for Rhyme Soldier. Rhyme Soldier? Rhyme. Rhyme Soldier? Rhyme Soldier. Does he soldier. rap at you? Yes, he does. No way. Yes, he does. What does he look like? Does he look like Vanilla Ice? Uh, he looks stupid. He's so only... Vanilla Ice. <laughs> He's only... He's only in the game for a few minutes before you kick his ass. I was about to say, you better beat this fucking nerd up. Uh, and then... 
to uncover more of the lore, more of your characters' personalities and Rhyme backstories. Soldier. You go you go back to Ion, which is like leagues under the surface of the ocean. Um, you go into what is called unimaginatively the Soul Matrix, and mm. you essentially explore your partner's souls. Yeah. Um, is and, that is that where you give them new demons? It's, it's where you collect most of your demons. But here is Rhyme Soldier. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like he looks like a bootleg Eminem. Like, yeah, he's real dumpy. Yeah, he's terrible. A lot of his rhymes aren't even like metered correctly. <laughs> they probably had to. Is it English dubbed? Yes. Uh, that's probably why the English VAs are actually really good, especially Sizo. It's hard to, it's hard to adapt things like that while still keeping their base meaning, and like making it rhyme and also keeping. The original meaning of what he was saying. So the best part about it is Rhyme Soldier, like he he kills Melody, um, and you show up just as she's giving her last breath, and he turns around. And he's like, "Yo, I'm gonna beat the shit out of you." <laughs> and then once you beat him, Ringo gives her own quirky like rhyme. She's like, "Uh, fuck you, you're done." I don't remember. I don't want to remember. I'm gonna fuck your little boy pussy. <laughs> well, he's actually quite big. Your uh, big boy pussy. He's a chunky guy. Yeah, but he, he look like I said, he looks like a like a chubby Eminem. But um, what I love about Soul Hackers Two so far is that it's just a just four people, four or five, if you want to include Fig, um, five people who don't really see eye to eye, but they're glow growing closer and closer together. And by the end of the game, it's going to be the bullshit. Oh, power of friendship. That's, that's, what you've described is almost every anime and or JRPG. Yeah. You have an odd squad of characters, each representative of their own weird personality type, except for the protagonist, who is kind of, uh, Almost either, a blank slate? Yeah, almost a blank slate. And, um, and, uh, they, at first, they don't get along... And they have to learn to work together, and then in the end, they're the best of friends. Blah, blah, blah. Well, a lot of... I, I'm not saying it's a bad archetype. Yeah. Uh, I'm just saying I, I can recognize whenever it happens. Yeah, that's just used in a lot of different stories. Yes. Because it's like, they've come such a long way. Oh, well, it's, it, it can be really fun. Most of most of the characters in Persona, like, um... The only people who really are, like, joining your cause of their own volition like, immediately are, like, your starting party. So you have Joker, you play as, obviously, Morgana, because he wants to help you get out of the prison, uh, Ryuji and On, because they're your classmates. Uh, and then every, pretty much everybody else is like, no, Joker, you're wrong, you're an asshole. Everything that you're saying goes against everything I know and believe. <laughs> and then you take them into the metaverse, and they're like, oh, whoa, this is... holy shit, you're right. Yeah, they're like, oh, this is fucked up, yeah, I'm gonna join you. <laughs> uh i think one of my so whenever i think of supporting casts shows with a good supporting cast i immediately think of jojo's and the way that i i think that my favorite supporting cast is from part four of jojo's bizarre adventure uh diamond is unbreakable i'll give you a little rundown of the plot for that so it takes place in a small Japanese town called Morio, and also it takes place in 1999. Okay. Um, so you follow this kid named Josuke, who's like a high school punk. Um, and he's not a bad person. Like, he dresses like a punk, but he's like really nice. And he'll help people and stuff. Uh, but, uh, like, Jotaro approaches him, and he's like, Hey, um, kid with the weird hair... Who the fuck are you? Uh, are you like a relative of uh, of someone I know? And the guy in Josuke is like, "What the fuck you say about my hair?" <laughs> he goes to punch Jotaro, uh, and Jotaro stops time, and uh, so it just like it's just like a glancing blow, and the Jotaro just punches him in the face with his real hand. Yeah. And he's like, "All right, listen, I'm just here because my grandpa Joseph Joestar." Um, he said he had an illegitimate son in this town, and it looks like it, it looks like a, it's you. And he's like, what? Okay. Um, 
But then there's just like shenanigans happen, and you you meet this kid that goes to school with Josuke. His name's Koichi, and he's about three feet tall. Oh, great! And he has dumb little nerd hair. And they're walking to school one day, and Koichi gets hit in the neck with an arrow. <laughs> <laughs> he just dies. <laughs> no, he doesn't die. Oh. Um. And you get to see that the dude who shot this arrow is this weird dude who's got, like, column hair. Oh, He's yeah, got, I've like, seen a this guy. Column hair. Yeah, I've seen this guy. And he has, like, um, I can't remember. I think it's a, a billion written down one arm, and he's got the yen sign on him. And his name is Kaicho. Uh, and he says, oh, little brother, you gotta go take care of these nerds. And so his little brother, Okiyasu, comes down. He has a uh, million written on his arm. He's got the yen sign. And he's like, oh, I'm Okiyasu, and this is my stand. It's very strong. And so he uses... <laughs> his stand is called the hand, and what its power is is that it can erase physical space. Oh. Anything it swipes with its right hand is just gone. That doesn't follow the laws of physics. Uh, don't worry about it. <laughs> I don't know. Space closes. So it's like it's like it was never there. Oh. So what he does is, instead of using it to just kill Josuke, he brings Josuke in and then he punches him in the face with his real hand. <laughs> Well, the first time you see this ability, he tries to use it on Josuke, and it, it uses it in the middle of a gate, and the, there's a sign on the gate, and it gets condensed. So now it does the words don't make sense. So it says, it's like a warning, the, uh, do not enter, but it says like, wang, yeah, daunter. Basically. Uh, and there's this really, they animate it really well. The first time he uses it, but like I said, whenever he uses it to bring Josuke in, there's like a there's like some garbage on the street that gets rustled up and brought forward too. Um, That's crazy. Bruh. Excuse me. Yeah. But they basically that's how you meet. Um, Okiyasu is the second friend character. Um. And then you basically just, uh, so Kaicho, he gets killed by this dude who was after the arrow he has, because what he has is called a stand arrow, and if you hit, if you hit with it, and your willpower is strong enough, you get a stand. Oh. So Koichi gets a stand. He tries to manifest it, and it's just an egg, though. <laughs> That's really, really cool. <laughs> uh... But anyways, so basically you go through and you, every episode fo sort of focuses on a different person with a stand in this town, whether they acquired it through, well actually never mind, let me go back to what I was saying. Kaicho is killed by a dude, an electric man, who kind of looks like Frieza, and he grabs Kaicho and runs him through the electrical lines. Oh! And that's how Kaicho dies, so Okiyasu is like, alright, I'll join you. And we'll find this guy and beat him up. And so that's it. And you, you just, you meet people throughout the town, whether they were given stands by this electric man or they just like, just had them. And um, you get to meet the people in this town. And you actually, most of the time, most of the time, even if they do get beat up, then they're like, all right, I, I was in the wrong here. Yeah. And then they'll just be cool. And they'll become members of the supporting cast. It's really nice. But the main plot of the of the show is there is a series of murders that happen in Morio. And they're like, well, who the fuck is doing these? Well, actually, it, it they, they, they were first caught on to it by one of the main characters. Or I guess one of the main supporting characters this little grotten this little goblin child named shigechi shigechi yeah and he has a stand that's just a bunch of little dudes that are like run around and get stuff for him and he's like i want a sandwich and um this guy named yoshikage kira looks like david bowie is sitting down in a park and, <laughs> and uh and he has a sandwich 
and he's sitting there, and in the bag is a severed hand. Oh. Because, you see, Yoshikage Kira has a hand fetish. And he's also a serial killer. Hand fetish? Yeah. I've never heard of that before. I mean, it should just make sense that it exists, but... So he likes hands a lot. And Shigechi, the little gremlin he is, gets his hands on the, uh... The bag with the hands, the hand in it. And, uh, Kira is like, oh shit, if this kid opens the bag, he's gonna know what I'm up to. Uh, so he tries to get the bag back from him. And Shigechi's like, dude, I just want a sandwich. <laughs> And so, uh, Kira hunts him down and eventually kills him. And they're like, well, who the fuck killed this guy? Who the fuck killed Shigechi? Mm -hmm. And they look into it more and they start to figure out, oh, is this Kira guy? Well, they, they, all they have is a button to go off of. Yeah. So they track down the tailor who had the button. Uh, it's Jotaro and Koichi. And they go to this tailor and they're like, all right, so we found the guy. Let's see. If he can tell us whose suit this came from. And he goes to read the label. And the guy explodes. And they realize it's because the the bad guy, Kira, is on to him. He knows that these guys are looking for him. And he's like, I'm not going to let this old man rat me out. So he blows up the old man. Using his ability, Sheer Heart Attack, which is just like a little tank mm -hmm. with a little skull on it, and says, Look at me! Or look <laughs> over here! Um, and so they're like, What the fuck? How do we beat this? And they realize it, it goes based off of heat signatures. So what they do is they like light a fire across the room, and it goes over there. Uh, and then the fire goes out, and it starts to chase after them again. Um, <laughs> meanwhile, Kira is across the city. And he's just, like, he's, like, at a cafe. And Koichi's, by this point, his stand has gone through a couple of evolutions. And at this point, it's, like, a little man. And he calls him Echoes Act 3. And <laughs> he's a, he's the one who says, let's kill the hoe. Okay. Um, I don't remember that. He says, let's kill the hoe, bitch! <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember that at all. He um he said he oftentimes spells out the word shit, which is really funny to hear a Japanese voice actor say S H I T. Um, so he has a move that that uh, is called the three freeze, and basically it just weighs down whatever it's aimed at, and it weighs down sheer heart attack, and because it deploys from his stand's hand. Kira's hand just goes right through the table. <laughs> it's like, oh, shit. Uh-oh. Um, but, so eventually Kira makes it to their location. He puts a hole in Koichi. Uh, and he thinks Jotaro's down for the count because of sheer heart attack. But Jotaro gets back up and he's like, listen. You got a nice watch. Alright? Mm -hmm. No, he says, uh... And then he says, oh, on closer inspection, that, that watch is actually kind of ugly. <laughs> <laughs> but you're not going to have to worry about it, because you, whenever I'm done with you, your face is going to look a whole lot worse. <laughs> the guy's like, what? And he tries to punch Jotaro. Jotaro dodges easy. And then he beats the fucking shit out of Kira. And then he passes over from blood loss. Um, by this time, uh, they have made contact with Josuke and Okiyasu, and they're on their way to the location. And Kira's like, fuck. If they get here... I'm a goner. So he manages to, to escape to one of the other stand users in the town um, who has the ability to like change up people's faces, like change their features. So what he does is uh, Kira grabs this dude off the street. Well, you don't see it, but um, this is what happens. He grabs a dude off the street and he's basically like, give me his face. And she's like, uh, alright. And he kills her, kills the dude who he stole his face of, and resumes life as normal. And they're like, fuck, we don't know what he looks like now. Cool. Did they find him? They do, yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> well, the, not... They, they, they don't find him on their own. So, the dude who he stole the face of 
he goes back to his family and his wife doesn't really like notice or care because if anything he's actually better now oh because he's, he's kind of a <laughs> shitty husband and now that kira is here he's, he's, he's got a little bit more passion um but his son is what really or i guess his son is a, what really picks up on him his name is hayato um but that's besides the point i'm just at this point if i go any further i'm just gonna ex- be explaining the entire part yeah but, uh, I, I've, this entire time, I, I've been thinking about, uh, you, you mentioned in Soul Hackers, was there a big dumb guy? Yeah. In Persona 4, there's a big dumb guy. Guess what his weapon is? What? A folding chair. <laughs> is he a professional wrestler? Uh, no. He's a high school student. What? Yeah, his weapon is a folding chair. That's dopey as hell. So, your main character uses a katana. Fine. Uh, I guess... That's pretty generic, but I guess all right. your other, another party member uses, like, really big kunai... Like, okay, sure, you can, I guess you can, like, poke people and really, flash at them. Really big kunai. Yeah, it's funny. Uh, and then there's somebody who uses a folding chair. And then I don't know, fucking know the other members of the party because I haven't played P4 yet. <laughs> I've been waiting for the, uh, I was gonna emulate it or purchase it on Steam. Either one. But then they announced Persona 5, uh, 4, and 3 on next-gen consoles. So I'm like, you know, I'm just gonna wait for those. So the strong dumb guy... In part four is Okiyasu. Yeah. And he's really stupid. He's really, really stupid. I lo- I, but he I has d- a crazy powerful stand. I really don't like... I mean, I guess it's just the character at this point. I hate it when they have, like, a dumb guy, but he's also, like, the beef of the squad. I think that that's amazing. I think it's hilarious. I, I think it's overdone. Or sometimes... I think, I think it's a great trope. Sometimes they're just too stupid. Well, Okiyasu isn't really... He's passively stupid. It's not like an act of ignorance. Oh, eventually, I mean, I think there's like once or twice it gets to be that bad, but most of the time he's pretty innocuous. Um, I think that's the only part that has a dumb strong guy. Because the strong guy in part three is Jotaro. Strong guy in part five, well, the strong guy in part five is actually like very smart. But he also leaves halfway through the part. Um, the strong guy in part six is again the main character. It's Jolene. So yeah, it's like the only that's the only part that has the the dumb strong guy trope. I'm trying to think of what other dumb strong guys I love. Um, Ryuji. Uh, Ryuji's not big. He's stupid, but he's not big. He's strong though, right? He's, isn't he like the muscle? To an extent, yeah. That's what he feels like, uh, having no experience he's, with he's, Persona. He's not, he's not so much, like, the muscle, he's, he's like, the Stop. track star. Stop. Stop. He, <laughs> he keeps trying to dig into my pocket. So, Ryuji used to be on the track team before your character moved to Young Jaya or, um, Shibuya. So, Ryuji was on the track team, there was an asshole teacher, and he... He injured Ryuji's leg, wow. so he couldn't be on the track team anymore. That's fucked up. Yeah, it's pretty fucked up. But, um... No, he's more so the, the fast one than the muscle. He also... One, one trope... Oh, that's why he's the chariot, isn't it? Yeah, I think so, because he's always charging into conflict. Um, One trope that he has throughout the game, which I absolutely love, is he's trying to create lingo... To catch on, but he he also says common like like expressions that don't that aren't correct. He he says um, jumping the gum. There's a dude in Fire Force who who does common phrases, but then he like he just reiterates them. I can't. I can't. <laughs> I can't I've been trying to think about a specific instance. I'm trying to think of other phrases that Ryuji has butchered. It's, like, it's really funny. Um, so whenever you're in Persona, you can spend time with your companions and confidants. That's how you get abilities to use in the metaverse. Or just make your fusion stronger, depending on the arcana. But uh, Ryuji tried to make bonkin uh, a slang <laughs> term. Bonkin. Yeah, like, keep bonkin, dude. Scout like, yeah, that's TF2. awesome. Yeah. <laughs> they're idiots, but they're lovable. 
Um, did I ever tell you that I, I haven't played Persona 3 in its entirety? But did I ever tell you that there's just a dog who can use Personas? Alright. That tracks. Oh, does it? Yeah. There's a dog. <laughs> the first animal stand user you meet... Well, for the first animal stand user you meet is an orangutan who is also a pedophile. I hate that combination. <laughs> I was just saying, orangutan. Okay, this is cool. He touches children. His, I his don't like that. His strength and... um. Because the the first the first generation of stands are named after the tarot mm -hmm. um, and some Egyptian gods, but uh, his stand is strength, and it turns a, it basically it, it has the ability to like enhance aspects of like whatever vessel or vehicle he is in. So he the the vehicle is really a dinghy, but he enhances it so it's a like an ocean liner. So whenever they beat up this ape. <laughs> it becomes just like a dinghy, and they're like, "Oh fuck!" <laughs> um, That's really good. A soon after that, um, about midway through the part, you're introduced to uh, a dog from the Bronx named Iggy, who also has a stand. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and Iggy, throughout the part, just eventually just gets like a dude face, <laughs> just like a, just the face of of a of a person on this little dog body. Um, but Iggy also dies, so you know that's beside the yeah, point. But I, I, I heard of the beefaroni, beefaroni. I heard of the dog persona user in three, and like that's fucking weird. What, what are they thinking? What are they on? What were they thinking? Um, I want to see. I think it's fun. Because wanna... it's like oftentimes it'll be like, oh, if humans have powers, why not animals? And I'll be like, well, in this case, the animals do have powers. <laughs> it's just seemingly more rare. Okay, so I found a list of Persona 4 weapon types. There are seven weapon types. I'm going to read these in in an order that would make sense. Like, most common to least common. Um, swords, knives, uh, guns, shields, claws, fans... And shoes. Like random task? <laughs> I guess it's like random task. Um, random task, by the way, is based off of a James Bond character called Odd Job, who, who does that same thing. He just throws shoes <laughs> with like deadly accuracy and force. Blade of Tatsuka. I'm not gonna remember any of this information. Blade of Titty Suck. I wish. Chie. She's the one who uses shoes! Her best weapon, the best weapon in the game for her are called the Moses Sandals. Do you remember that clip of uh, George Bush going to some press conference overseas and someone throws a shoe at him? No. You haven't seen that? I don't. Oh my fucking god, it's hilarious. I <laughs> don't remember that. This is canon. Okay, I'll take your word for it. George Bush shoe. You don't need audio. Yeah, I don't care about the audio. No, I, I don't remember this. But he, 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 the first time he dodges, he looks back at the guy and he has like this, this devious grin on his face. He's like, ha! Got him. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember that at all. It's hilarious. It's pretty good. Um, the new JoJo game looks like butt. I think that art style doesn't translate very well. I think well you're bullshit. Anyways. <laughs> um, it, it took me a while to get used to that art style. Well, um, two-dimensionally, it looks fantastic. Yeah. Spicy lady. She's <laughs> under the couch right now trying to get my heels. Yeah, it's funny. It's, it is funny, I guess. Um, do you want to say it like that? Rusty, when do you think we're going to get a sponsorship from Raid Shadow Legends? I think it's only a matter of time. <laughs> it's like anybody with a viewer base over over two digits will get a, a sponsorship for Raid. So it's, yeah, it's, we're not far out from that. <laughs> it would not surprise me if in the next, like, few months, if by the end of the year we got a sponsorship with Raid Shadow Legends. No, dude, Raid, seriously? 
reach out to us. <laughs> well, listen, we'll show your product for sure. I'll play it for like five minutes. Say, all right, this is a this is a game. Um, I've played it for a weekend, and I said this is uh, certainly something I can spend time on. Uh, and then I never, proceeded to not to. Yeah, I played it like Saturday for an hour, Sunday for an hour, and then I never touched it again. Um, Rusty, when's the last time you had a good mobile game on your phone? Never. What? Uh, I used to play the the Marvel, like um, contest of champions and stuff. Yeah. But I eventually just lost interest in them. I have. I don't. I don't play games on my phone anyways. I have Sonic 1, Sonic 2, Fallout Shelter. I have Plague Inc., Balloons Tower Defense. I also have a Nanogram game called Meow Tower. You solve Nanogram puzzles and then you buy furniture for cats. I Look at this. I love it. Shout out to Meow Tower. Somebody, uh, whoever made Meow Tower, reach out to us. We'll show your product too. I will do it much more enthusiastically than Rusty. I don't know. Because I love... Neat. I like nanograms. Uh, um, I'm old. <laughs> anyway. Um, I like nanograms and coffee. If I'm bored on my phone, I just listen to music or go through Twitter. Well, when I'm at work, I can't listen to music. When I'm at I, work, I'm not I on my, go through Twitter. I'm not on my phone at work. Guys. GameStop CEO. <laughs> don't fire me. Please do not fire um, we have we have a small TV, so we have the big TV behind the counter. The same five video game commercials on loop. Um, it's actually like eight. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it, it feels like five. When's Midnight Suns coming out? Next year. Damn. Yeah, it was pushed back to next fiscal year, or no, the That's end rough. of this fiscal year. So by the end of spring, I believe. By the beginning of spring? That's fucking rough. Yeah, it sucks. Luckily, though, they've been putting out those gameplay videos. Have they been putting out more? Yeah. Oh, dude, I want to see them. They did one, I think that they did... uh, The Hunter was the last one I remember them putting out. I don't really give a shit, because the Hunter's going to have a very malleable play style. Um, But before that, they did Scarlet Witch. Mm -hmm. They did a handful of other characters, I think all of which you've seen. Yeah, so Midnight Suns coming out next year. Um... But we have the, the TV behind the counter that plays, like, five to seven different advertisements. Um, it's only... Best case, it's roughly an hour of content. But it feels like a lot less than an hour of content. <laughs> so we have, like, a smaller TV that we set up on the, the front of the counter that we usually use to test controllers and systems. Um, and we've actually started, like, linking our phones to it to play YouTube videos for games that we're actually interested in. Mm. Like, actual gameplay trailers for Gotham Knights, um, some Bayonetta 3 stuff, Sonic oh, Frontiers. We didn't, we didn't talk about the God of War trailer. Because, wanna... yeah, we can talk about that. We'll talk about we'll, it now. We can talk about the state of play. Alright, uh, so... God of War, first and foremost, I feel like that's like the, the cornerstone of the state of play. Um, I didn't watch all of it. There yeah, it was, I think that that was the last reveal that they did. We only, Rusty and I only saw the games. We watched the Tekken 8 and God of War videos, but nothing else. Um, I know there were details for PlayStation VR 2, which I right now I don't give a shit about. <laughs> um, I'm sure when it comes out, I'm going to be like, oh god, I need this. I gotta have it. But... Gotta have that big PSVR of yours. <laughs> yeah. So, God of War, oh, God of War looks so good. I've actually been seeing some screenshots and clips being played on iFunny, or posted to iFunny, and people are like, guys, don't buy this, this looks like the same game with a different coat of paint, and all of the replies to those comments are like, yes. Did you watch the trailer? It's, it's like, yeah, it's a direct <laughs> sequel, it's gonna look similar. Um, uh, what, what I think is crazy is the, the trailer that they used to announce the game is it shows like basically none of the same footage as the one that we get from state of play mm -hmm. like it's these are two entirely different collections of stuff and i think that that shows an incredible diversity in the content that is going to be in that game yes this is going to be a massive game it's going to run like butt cheeks or look like butt cheeks on the playstation 4 but that's why we have PS5s, baby. Baby. 
um, the scene, the part that I am going to be most giddy about is Kratos versus Thor. Oh, that's going to be fucking... Kratos throws yeah. the axe, so Thor throws I, the hammer. I looked into it a little more, and it looks like they are on the Lake of Nine. On the that lake? Is, yeah, that has been frozen over. Oh. Because obviously, whenever they... Spoiler alert for God of War... It's uh, been for like four years 2018, now. 2018. Um, at the end of the game, they kill Baldur. And thus start the process of Ragnarok. They accelerate the process of yes. Ragnarok. Um... So they start uh, Fimble Winter, which is like a winter that's supposed to last like a really long time, uh, and it's really brutal. So as an effect of that, the the Lake of Nine freezes over, and uh, that's where in the state of play you see Thor fight Kratos, presumably for the first time. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. I think well, they're probably said it was pull... a dream, right? No, that was that was whenever he shows up at, to the cabin. Yeah, Atreus said that was a dream. Well, they also had they also replay that scene with teenager Atreus mm-hmm. or young adult Atreus, I suppose. I don't um, think so. They use it. They use it at the end of the announcement trailer for Ragnarok. They're but they're I'm pretty sure that's him. still Kid Kratos. Mm-hmm. Atreus. Or not, Kid Atreus, yeah. So they're either going to use Thor as, like, a tutorial boss, well, or thinking, you're just going to fight him later in the game. I'm thinking that Thor is going to be, like, Balder. Um, where you fight him a few times, and by the end of the game, maybe you kill him. My guess is, um, this is pure speculation. Yes. Um... I definitely think that it's going to get to a point where Kratos just has to kill Thor. That's for sure going to happen. But what I think is, if you look in the trailer, Thor has to snap his fingers to recall Mjolnir. And I think what they're setting up there is a weakness. that he the, the, There's a difference between the recall process between Thor and Kratos. Kratos, Kratos, Kratos can just, his... just, yes, he can hold out his hand and just recall it. Thor snaps his fingers. What I think they're setting up is... There's going to be something, they're going to do, they're going to end up doing something. They're going to put that... wool gloves on him. No, because <laughs> it doesn't, I don't think the snap sound matters. I think it's the, oh, maybe it matters, I don't know. But I think they're going to stop him somehow from being able to snap his fingers, and thus, he's not going to be able to use Mjolnir. Like and they... I think Kratos is going to be able to get Mjolnir, or at least someone definitely i think that if you start the game with the leviathan axe and the blades of chaos it wouldn't be a god of war game if you didn't get another piece of equipment yes so my guess is by the end of the game he is going to have use of mjolnir and then that also adds another element to his arsenal because he has fire he has ice and then with mjolnir he would have lightning uh, he just needs, in the next game, if there is a God of War 3, he would just need Earth. There you go, you got all, you got the four big ones. But yeah, so, and you know, if, I think it will be like a struggle for like Kratos to use Mjolnir at first, but then he'll like, I think that that's what he's going to use to kill Thor. I think he's going to take the hammer from him and like, beat him down with it. That'd be fucking awesome, dude. Um, the disrespect. There's there's a lot of lines in the God of War trailers I've been seeing. Um, or was it the one that we saw at State of Play? Stop. Atreus is like, you don't trust me. He's like, I follow you. He says, you don't believe me. He says, but still I follow. I, I want to see. I really need to see the, the tension and the development between those two again. Oh, I love it. I love it when characters are organically uh, developed and it, it, they feel like people. And it's not just like, oh, well, I was wrong. So it's okay. We all make mistakes. And then they're right back to where they were. <laughs> Little grippers are sticking out. You know what's crazy? What's that? Sonic has been active for, what is it, 25 years now? Something like that. How much has his character developed? Sonic isn't a character, really. He's a cool guy. Yeah. Sonic is an idea, <laughs> I guess. 
in, in as far as stop it lady you scratching me i mean he's it, also had insofar as like mario i think he i think sonic has more development than mario because he's just plumber he goes wahoo yeah you go bing bing wahoo yeah <laughs> this is the backwards long jump into oblivion but yeah i guess i don't know because Sonic still doesn't have much development. Sonic is cool. Tails is smart. Knuckles is stupid. Yeah, there you go. Shadow Dumb is... strong guy, Knuckles. Shadow is edgy. <laughs> That's a character that we love. Uh, well, maybe you do. I love Knuckles. I think Knuckles is stupid. I think that you're a dipshit fucker <laughs> piece of shit. You should go die. <laughs> because you disagree with me. <laughs> Your opinion isn't identical to mine. But no, I, I love Knuckles. Knuckles is... Uh, Knuckles, Knuckles can be funny, especially... Fa famous in, dip, dipshit Knuckles the Hedgehog. Especially in the Sonic 2 movie. I actually saw... So, one of my co-workers had to pick up a job at Spectrum. Uh, because GameStop just wasn't cutting it. So, we essentially just demoted him. So that he could still be on our schedule once in a while. Um, he came in one day to purchase a couple of things and i'm like dude i just saw the sonic 2 movie he's like i really don't want a third and i'm like but shadow though we gotta see shadow he said i don't give a shit about shadow yeah like, how, how could you not shadow's like the ironically coolest character yeah so shadow is the character that everyone loves to make fun of exactly yeah rusty do you think the sonic movies are gonna go on long enough for them to introduce um silver and blaze I really hope so. And then they make fun of how <laughs> stupid and convoluted they are. Yeah. It's like, you guys are from the future I, I really trying like... to kill Sonic so he doesn't raise a lava monster that consumes the world? I think it's really incredible and also stupid how much of the Sonic mythos mirrors Dragon Ball. Because Silver is like Trunks. He's from the future. He's really cool. And he has absurd powers. Um... And obviously, you know, with the Chaos Emeralds and the Dragon Balls. Um, my assistant manager actually, uh, he downloaded Fall Guys to play with his niece. And he saw that Super Sonic was a downloadable skin, or like an additional skin that you could buy. <laughs> so he bought Super Sonic just because Super he's like the biggest Dragon Ball nerd that I know. No offense. <laughs> what? <laughs> anyway. You pause me for my reaction? Yeah, I thought you were going to be butt hurt. No. Like the big butt baby you are. I guess you have more interests in other things. Um. So he bought that. What was I saying? Sonic sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's, that's the goal that I had in mind. That there's a lot of things. Sonic, Sonic and Dragon Ball both amongst other things, have been going on for so goddamn long, the canon is so convoluted, you kind of just have to pick and choose what you want to exist. Yeah. Or just treat everything as, like, its own self-contained story. The only problem with doing, trying to do that for Dragon Ball is, um, like, some things are direct continuations of other things. Yeah. So, like, there are the two, there are two series that are really sequels to Z, um, so, like, you got GT, which picks up right at the end of Z. Um, because at the end of Z, there's a, a flash forward ten years into the future. Uh, and GT picks up from there. And then Dragon Ball Super picks up right after Goku defeats Kid Buu. What? I got Arthur! Nice. <laughs> but, um, so... I want to end this real quick, but before before we end, I believe it's important to to do um, our favorite bit, which is the celebrity rumors. Celebrity rumors? What have you been hearing? What have I been hearing indeed? Um, Give me a split second. I gotta dig up some dirt. So, um... Who was it? I gotta find it. Let's see, let's see. Um, I guess The Rock, in order to prepare for um, his role as Black Adam, he, he just 
he would go into high up places and just yell Shazam. It's really weird. Yeah, like he would climb like, Is it like radio a, towers like and shit. Method acting. Yeah, I guess. Um, like really getting into the mindset of shit. <laughs> yeah, he would dress. He would dress in the costume too. So like he climbed a mountain, like a decent sized mountain, enough that had snowy peaks. But not like a life threatening one. And yeah. He just did it all wearing nothing but the Black Adam suit. That's strange. Um, I think I might have something a little bit more exciting. He was carrying Kevin Kevin Hart on his back. Well, of like course a baby. he was. Yeah, they they never leave each other's sides. <laughs> it's almost like they have to exist within a mile of each other. <laughs> or else they both start to like shrivel and weaken. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> their their <laughs> vitality is linked. Um, so, on the internet, a lot of, uh, it's news, I think it just surfaced, like, earlier today, maybe yesterday, but Grand Theft Auto 6 has been having some leaks. Um, first of all, it looks good, what they have so far, of course. Um, it's incomplete, people are like, this looks like incomplete shit, as if the game already came out, (laughs) but... I think Adam Sandler leaked it. Really? I I do. I think he's got something against Rockstar, dude. Wearing his You're Mad Bro shirt. <laughs> you Mad Bro. He has a shirt that actually says that. I believe this it. Isn't a bit. I believe it. No, Adam Sandler dresses like he doesn't make millions of dollars from shitty movies. That's hilarious to me. <laughs> so it's it's like, like he's telling me to eat shit. He's wearing basketball shorts that are always like six sizes too large. <laughs> Yeah, they're basically around his ankles. He's he's almost walking around with his ass out, but you know. Um grass out, ass out. I don't exactly know what that means. Um I've also seen pictures of Adam Sandler with like a tube top on, and you can see through his shirt that he has like really weird nipple piercings. Well, I think all nipple piercings are weird, you know? But they're like ugh. I think it's just the idea of Adam Sandler's nipples that's really getting to me. I think it's the idea of Adam Sandler that yeah. I don't like. Spicy lady is trying to climb up through the couch. I feel her under my butt. <laughs> it's like the Eric Andre bit where he has someone sit down on the chair and then someone is like poking up through it. Yeah, it's great. You want to watch some Eric Andre? No, nah, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna call it quits real soon. Oh, you queep. I have to put on some Eric Andre for you first, though. No, I'll play uh, Sonic in my on my Switch. Virgin. So, well, no. Uh, right. Thank you guys for coming to the cellar. Gab our cellar. Stay away from our jelly. Peace! <laughs>